Joseph L. Williams. I've never, in all my years of knowing him, I've never heard anything bad about him. And I thank God for him. As we rest to our feet, I want you to point your hands to him. Stand on your feet. Everybody, your hands. I want you to point your hands to him. And I want you to say, Elder. Elder. Preach the word. Preach the word. Come on, say, Elder. Elder. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach one more. One faith, one faith, and one baptism. One baptism. Amen. 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 Well, put your hand together for Jesus. Put your hand together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Put your hand together for Jesus. Even the Lord be on the night. Hallelujah. You heard you got to be different. You got to be afraid of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm about to learn, but sometimes you have to encourage yourself. The pressure's all around, but God is a present help. All the enemy created walls, but remember, giants, they do fall. Speak over yourself, encourage yourself, evil. As I minister to you, oh, I minister to myself. Life can help you so. Do you feel? And the young men that were brought up with him 
spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou answer the people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it somewhat lighter for us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. For as my father put a heavy yoke upon you, I will put more to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Thus concludes the reading of the word of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, our theme this year is Jesus I'll Never Forget, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and 1. You all know it. And I read it from the text of 2 Chronicles concerning Rehoboam, Solomon's son, the grandson of King David. All right, all right. Now, in this chapter of 2 Chronicles, King Solomon has just died. And his son Rehoboam is the reign in his stead. Uh -huh. Now they go on to Shechem and they anoint him as king. Amen. And then Jeroboam, who we read a couple chapters beforehand, pops up out of nowhere when Rehoboam is about to be come to him. Now ain't it something when somebody comes into your life when God is about to elevate you and you're about to get your success and now they want to tag along with you. You ain't seen them a couple of years, you don't know where they've been. You could, they, I don't know, they could have been in jail. They pop out, I thought you, I heard some you was in a hospital or something like that. But they want to tag along with you because of formal things or formal conversations that, or relationship that they had with you. Amen? And they want to get part of your shine. They want to photobomb what you got going on. Amen? And you're looking like, I where, I ain't seen you. Where have you been? When I needed you, you weren't there. When I tried to find you, I couldn't find you. You changed your phone number. You changed your area code. I couldn't find your Facebook page because you deleted it. Couldn't follow you on Twitter or Instagram anymore. But now because God wants to do something in my life, you want to show up. That's with friends. That's with family members. That's with boyfriends. That's with girlfriends. That's with all of that. They pop up out of nowhere. And Satan uses the people so they can get you off track. But if you can spot him coming there, I go, oh, hold on, wait a minute, no. You got to go somewhere else. You ain't going to come up in here because we no longer have that kind of relationship anymore. God is doing something different in my life. And I can guarantee you that person that pops up is not doing what God has called them to do. Amen? Now, according to verses 4 through 8, Rabon being the son of the great King Solomon and the grandson of a King David, a legacy later on to become the Lion of Judah, which is the Lion of Jesus, he desires to take the counsel of his friends as he becomes king, or his homies, his BFFs, his, his buddies. Now, he was brought up in the way of God, amen, but he strains when he gets around his friends. He allows his buddies to influence him. Can't have a mind of his own because he got to look good. Can't have a mind of his own because he got to show somebody, well, I'm going to be king. My daddy did it like this, but I'm going to do it even better and bigger and better than he did. So y'all can remember me. But the older men tell him, if you would lighten the burden on the people that follow you, that listen to you, and they will do what you say. But because of my buddies have so much influence and I can't think for myself, I'm going to go do the opposite. Mm. Poor Redbone. And now, now his father's not alive at this time. And he follows those people who tell him what to do. They pump his head up and he makes stupid decisions on how to rule. He do make stupid decisions on how to rule. And you got to watch that sometimes. You let people get in your ear and your head and you start making decisions that you ain't supposed to. Your parents look at you funny. You, you, you didn't do stuff like this. When did you start talking like that? When did you start listening to stuff like that? When did you start looking at things like that? Oh, it's because who I hang around with. I ain't found my identity in Christ. Boy, you need to get in touch with Jesus. And there's a chance on tonight if you don't know him. Now, it's times where God will have you go a certain way or do a certain thing and everyone will be like flies buzzing around your ear, giving you their opinion. I didn't ask for your opinion. If I did, I would have told, hey, can I have your opinion on this? But you got to put your two cents on everything. And nine times out of ten, when you put your two 
sense is, you, you're not really helping me in my situation. You just tell me what I want to hear. Or you're trying to put sympathy on me. But you're not really telling me because if you were my friend or my buddy, you would tell me like it is. And I would understand and get myself together. Come on now. But I didn't ask for your opinion. Because you don't know the story. My worship is real. I told you last night. You don't know what I've been through. So I don't need your opinion. The only validation I get is from God. Amen. And it's like much of our young people who have grown up in church or participate in church or keep coming for a season or a reason. And yet when the crew is around, you begin to act different than you do in the house of the Lord. I find you doing other things outside of the church. If you're going to be in God, be in God for real. We talked about it this morning. There is no reason that you should follow God like you should. And then you, you don't do it all the way that you're supposed to. And you want to play around and clown and everything else. Yeah. And then when God cries that sky. Wow. And you get up there to the judgment seat. And he judges you according to the deeds done in his body. Yeah. And because he was clowning around. Yeah. And wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. Yeah. Chase just said earlier. Yeah. You know he's going to spew you up. Get away from me you work of iniquity. I don't know you. Yeah. All that time you had on earth. All that time you spent playing, you could have got serious, but spent all that time to spend eternity in hell. Something wrong with that. Because how many of y'all want to go to heaven? Oh, I, how many of y'all want to go to heaven? I'm trying to get there. Hallelujah. But you'll see them dancing. You'll see them praise dancing, playing the instruments, praying the house down, sitting at the door ushering. Participating on you Sundays, but when I get outside, I do a Dr. Jack or Mr. Hyde thing. And I'm telling you, if you're gonna lift up the name of Jesus, folks are watching and they're looking at you. And I'm telling you, especially in this city, you do something, somebody gonna know about it a couple of minutes later. So you got to be on your best behavior, amen. That's all right. <laughs> I don't know what it is to find validation or acceptance from others who will turn their back on you and throw you to the wolves and pull you down like a crab in a bucket. Don't want to see you make it. Don't want to see you go nowhere. They hate on you. They talk about you behind your back. And only because they got some kind of insecurity on the inside of them. But you keep on moving forward. You keep on going ahead because God has a purpose and calling on your life. So you do not allow people to get in your way to do have your best interest at heart. Come on, somebody. You keep running for Jesus. You pay the price for that anointing. You pay the price to go to get these gifts that God has given you, not them. Don't you have a people's salvation? They can kick rocks. All I care. To give it to you straight and try to shield you from the plows of the enemy. But you say, I'm wrong. I can do whatever I want. You can't tell me what to do. I work the job. I got my own car. But baby, I come to tell you this morning before destruction. You need to hear what the people are saying. Especially if they love you and have the best interest at heart for you. And I don't want to hear you. You can't tell me this. We talked about it in the panel discussion. Well, my mama did this, and my daddy did this, and I go back and they say, no, I want you to do that. You got to honor your parents. Yeah, they made mistakes. You gonna make some mistakes too. You don't want your kids putting that back in your face. Don't you dare. Because you showing your days. And some of y'all probably got maybe a few weeks, a few months. Get them there. If there was a calendar boy, we'd be scared like I don't know what. You know, I got the year 76. I better stop. That's all. I got the year 39. Woo. Thank God we ain't got no calendar. God knows they point in time. Amen. Because you, and then another thing, since you're grown, or you say that you're grown, I, I, I'm, 
I'm growing up. I'm getting there. I'm not grown, but I'm getting there. And you, because you say you're so-called grown, and you so-called love with somebody, yeah. or you got a little job, yeah. or someone has been feeding you lies and you can't see the truth, yeah. because you're so blinded to the things that are going in your face and the things of the world, yeah. and you can't recognize the real thing at all. Yeah. Uh, going back to panel discussion um, this morning, we talked about it. There's so many people in the church, yeah. especially those that are hurting, that need the real thing. Yeah. But so many times, the pseudos or the fakes and the phonies, the ones that have been trying to do this thing but ain't really living it right, have come through the path that when the real thing pops up, they don't know what it is. They can't recognize it. And when they really do need it, 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 it hurts them because they need something to hold on to. But because of so much of the foolishness going on, it turns them away from God. And I'm telling you, if you're dabbling in foolishness and doing what you're not supposed to do, you can run somebody away and God will hold you accountable for it. Do all you can to disciple somebody under Jesus. My God. Well, you said you're a preacher. And you know the word. I got a good who. Yeah, I can do all of that. I can hop on chairs and pews and stuff. I can sing you a good song, a lullaby song. Yeah. And I can break down the text and everything else. But when you see me, I'm arrogant. I'm selfish. I'm full of myself. I'm narcissistic. I think it's all about me. And I'm warning you. I'm telling you tonight. You need to understand that God, if He gets a hold of you, and he has to humble himself. Y'all already know. Some of y'all know for real. God has a hold of you, man. You don't want that to happen. Go the easy way. God, I, I'm going to humble myself before you. Because you get a hold of me, bro, I got to go through some stuff. I got to go through some obstacles, some stumbling blocks. My God. But I, I'm going to take the easy road. God, you ain't, you ain't got, you ain't got to touch me. You ain't got to come my way. I, I'm going to do what you say. Right. And I'm going to put myself down and allow you to raise up in me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But you're a preacher. You have a lifestyle that people are looking at you to live. You're a preacher. You got to be kind. You're a preacher. You got to talk to folks. You're a preacher. You got to have a heart for the people. You can get up here and preach all day long. Right. Up here for the wrong reason because I want some money. And I want people to come up to the altar. I want them to hear me sing and hear me hoop and stuff. Get the cross away with that. Do it for the glory of God. Do it for the people that need it. Do it to build the kingdom and take yourself out of it. It ain't about you. It's never been about you. You can't be selfish. He'll get you. And if you're in a selfish mode right now, he's going to certainly get you. Just wait. Keep on living. Amen. But I want to tell you, if you don't seek the Lord or the counsel of those who can give you wisdom, you're going to be in trouble. Amen. Because they're there to help you. The Bible says in Psalms 1 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scorn. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law will he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the water, river the water, and bring forth his fruit in season. His leaf shall not wither, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly and seek the counsel of the godly people that have your best interests at home. All right, your pastors, your closest friends that really know you, know about you, the preachers in your life, your mother, your father, those that God has surely placed in your life. Oh Amen. Amen. The ones that help you through hard times and trials and struggles, they are there to get you to where you need to be. Right. Amen. Don't, don't, don't allow other people to come in because folks will sneak in oh, yeah. and try to be your friend oh, right now. and put on a false mask oh, yeah. 
and give you all false deception to be your friend and everything else. And then when things get rough, up, they gone. And it stabs you in your back. You can get hurt. And then some of y'all take it. Some of y'all, I think some of y'all love it. Some of y'all just take it. Look on you all the time, talk about you. I'm just still my friend, girl. Man, that's my homie. No. Come on. If you got to be all by yourself, you got to be all by yourself. But I told you there's a friend that's been close to the brother. And his name is Jesus. That's what you need. Amen. Now, Ray Bell he knew what he was doing. Allowing others to influence him. And he had the true influence all along. Those who helped him lead his father and grandfather and who will one day come through his lineage to manifest himself and sinful flesh and down the cross at the line of Judas. We're talking about Jesus. Amen. Now, Rabon couldn't show weakness and had to prove to himself and his bros that he could that he could hang with the best. Right. You ain't got to prove to nobody nothing. Oh, That's right. God gets the final say so. Yes, yes. I, I don't care what they say. It don't matter. You don't need the popularity. No, no. Look at Jesus' life. Only three close people with him. He had, he had 12 of them, but some of them did him dirty. Right. Come on now. Come on, Where could show no weakness. I got to be with the best of them. I, I got to look proud. So then, and, and, and that, when you got to be with the best of them, some of y'all go out and buy the expensive stuff to be with the best of them. You go hang out with a certain place you ain't supposed to be with, be with the best of them. Your conversations are not godly to be with the best of them. You need to change your tongue. Okay. Amen? Because we're doing things to glorify God, right? Yeah. All right. And it's something you have to be accepted by others who are as empty and looking to be accepted themselves.